News Talk 1010, CFRB AM, Toronto. Toronto. The voice you trust in the Astral family. Ted Charney joins us right now. He is a renowned litigation lawyer. I was told to say that, Ted. <laughs> renowned. Um, I sung that while... I know you, Ted, I know you don't care, but I sung that a while ago, and somebody uh, kept the tape, and now we use it whenever the Human Rights Commission comes up. And, of course, usually, unfortunately, uh, I, I guess the... I guess the Human Rights Commission does do some good work. We only talk about it when it does ridiculous stuff that we can't even believe. Yeah. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim, I just to interrupt you. I've got I've got Drake on the other line, and he was wants an opinion on whether there's been a violation of the Human Rights Code. Because I heard his feelings. Based exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, but first of all, before we talk about this story, folks, and, and I almost wish that I didn't tell people that this happened in Ontario, because I think that people would have a hard time believing what they're about to hear over the next 10 minutes. So keep listening, people. Um, when, when you take a look at the Human Rights Commission, I know you deal with them from time to time. Do you think, I mean, do you throw out the baby with the bathwater when I say that this is a ridiculous joke and we need to get rid of them? I think the answer is there have to be more checks and balances in terms of accessing the system. The problem with, with the way it's been set up since 2008 is that complainants, no matter how frivolous their complaints, get a free ride. I'm not sure if everyone's aware of this, but, for example, if you're an employee and you have any kind of perceived complaint against your employer, you can file a complaint with the Human Rights Tribunal, and you'll get a lawyer for free, supplied by the Human Legal Rights Support Center, and if you run the hearing and you lose, there's no cost consequences doesn't cost you anything if you win yep. you get paid it's it's a free ride it's a license to file a complaint and most employers that have to hire lawyers to defend these cases they're small businesses they can't afford the lawyer and then they want to just sell the case and pay the employees something to make it go away so sure. it can be a shakedown so sure. so and I think you know if we if you told me on the face of it and I knew nothing about this kind of stuff a human rights commission I, I would think oh they're gonna do good work they're gonna make sure that minorities aren't discriminated against when they're looking for an apartment or somebody doesn't get fired because of the race that kind of stuff that I think we all care about but when we find out these ridiculous uh, stories about the guy who wants wanted to smoke his medical marijuana in the smoking area just outside of a family restaurant and a guy not knowing what to do just thought hey do you mind moving down a bit and he's hauled through the courts to the tune of about a hundred thousand dollars or the guy who wasn't sure that the transgendered person should be able to use the female or male <laughs> locker room he, he wasn't even trying to discriminate he just didn't know what the, because there was no standard in both of those cases there was no precedent and both of these people get to be used as guinea pigs and they get to be dragged through the court and pay hundreds of thousands of dollars because there is no standard and no precedent they get to have the precedent made on their back that's obscene I agree with you and the difficulty is is a lot, some of these adjudicators they're just not properly trained on how to run these hearings and they don't understand that there has to be a reasonable limit on accommodation so they need they need the court who is responsible for reviewing these decisions to set the proper parameters and to send them directives when they get to get it wrong which was what happened here and the case that we're about to tell you about involves a young woman she, her name is Maxine uh, Telfer and she ran a company and a company that gets federal money to provide job training to immigrant women which is kind of interesting because she got in trouble for basically telling this person that you know what if you want to get a job and I know it might sound bad to say that you shouldn't wear your traditional religious um, clothing but it might help you if you wore a skirt and wore some uh, you know sh shoes that were you know not not spiked stilettos but some you know uh, high heels that might help you um, but that's used against her and the uh, human rights tribunal uh, you know rules against her and then she doesn't have the money to pay the thirty thousand dollar penalty so guess what folks guess what i'm going to tell you in one second one second it's a cliffhanger 245 news time saver traffic 
Well, still snowing in the GTA right now. That's creating slippery road conditions. Luckily, the major routes are running lighter than usual, but problems still popping up. Westbound 407 ramp to the westbound 401, partially blocked with a jackknife tractor trailer. Westbound 401 collectors dragged towards Avenue Road. Only the left lane was getting through because of a collision, but it looks like that has just cleared out of the way right now. Southbound DVP passed on Mills. A collision in the right lane is cleared, but you're still going to find some delays. In town, there's broken water main eastbound Eglinton at Kennedy and expect construction delays at Finch and Keel. The MBNA Smart Cash credit card is pure genius. Earn up to 5% cash back on gas and groceries and 1% cash back on virtually everything else. Apply at mbana.ca slash smart cash. News Talk 1010 10, time saver traffic every 15 minutes. I'm Maggie Blood. Your next update at 3 o'clock. So get a load of this. I'm going to set the scene for you again. Maxine Telfer owns a company. She gets federal money to help new Canadians, females, get jobs. She tries to tell this woman that the best way to uh, get a job might be to lose her religious garb, wear a skirt, and wear some heels. She's then subsequently uh, fired about six weeks later for other reasons, but that woman uses the religious problems that they had in the, the dress and that kind of stuff to come after her former employer, whose job was to effectively help people. So the Ontario Human Rights Commission rules against Maxine Telfer, who uh, then has to pay $36,000, doesn't have the money. Here's what's the, the kicker. They came after her house. They put a lien on her house, and they tried to take her house. That's where our guest, Ted Charney, comes in, the renowned litigator. And what happens at that point, renowned litigator man? We file uh, a judicial review, which is uh, basically an appeal to a three-judge panel of the divisional court, and they released their decision last week, finding the, uh, the Human Rights Tribunal's decision to be palpably unfair and palpably, patently unreasonable, which is judge speak for it obviously was an unfair and an unreasonable decision. They give lengthy reasons identifying nine different ways that the adjudicator got it wrong, and they set aside the decision. And what were some of those reasons that the human rights adjudicator got it wrong and basically, because this woman was just, I mean, give me a break. To me, it seems like she was trying to help the person. And it might be, it's that what, what you talked about earlier, Ted, that, you, you know, it's nice to allow people to have a multicultural society, but when you're effectively building a wall in front of yourself and not allowing yourself to assimilate and get a job and get full value out of the country, and somebody suggests that to you, and all of a sudden, you are a religious bigot who uh, gets a human rights tribunal ca case fall down on you, that is unfair. Well, I'll tell you what happened here is, first of all, there was a dress code violation that the tribunal found, and you were, you were just speaking about it previously. Uh, the employer here requires their employees to wear business attire in the workplace because they're trying to train their customers who are recent immigrants to Canada on how to find a job. So all of the, many of the employees are multicultural, and they wear appropriate religious attire, which is usually uh, conforms to business attire because it's quite moderate. And they wear hijabs. Many of them wear hijabs. But one day, this particular employee came to work, and according to the employer, she was wearing ankle bracelets, open-toe sandals, a tight short skirt, and leggings, as well as a new form of hijab, which looked like a cap to the employer. So uh, they had a meeting with her and they asked her to wear appropriate business attire. And uh, because of that meeting and because they asked her to do that on that day, uh, the adjudicator found there had been religious discrimination, but the divisional court said this was a meeting about style and taste. It wasn't about religious accommodation. And then at the same meeting, something which I call the man issue came up. One of the, employee, one of the people that were present in the meeting was a man, there was, and the man was there to discuss whether they're in compliance with the dress code. So this adjudicator wrote a decision saying that no woman in these circumstances, regardless of their level of religion, observance, or what faith they are, should be subject to a man being part of this kind of a meeting. Who the hell is on the Ontario Human Rights Commission that a man wouldn't be able to apply it doesn't matter whether you're male or female it's somebody interpreting a dress code and they make that out to be a man uh, a sexist male uh, thing the other great offense that turned into this nightmare hearing for odd max was the microwave policy we haven't talked about that yet that was the other big issue for the human race do tell well small business has a microwave 
which all of the employees get to use. Um, I have a small business, I'm sure many people do, it's not that unusual. Well, one day, Maxine told this employee, you know, whatever you cooked in the microwave today, please don't cook it again because the odors are going through the workplace and it's uncomfortable for some of your coworkers, yep. so please don't do it. The adjudicator found that that was a breach of the human rights code. It discriminated against the employee based on her ethnicity and religion because of a cultural identification with the food. Turned out on the divisional court hearing that the food this employee cooked wasn't even her food. One of her co-workers, who is from Tunisia, gave her the food, and the employee is Bengalese-Canadian, so the food had nothing to do with her own ethnicity. Yeah, you're, ta you're, you're not talking about a bunch of white Canadians in an office. You're talking about a multicultural, multicultural office. That, but, so, uh, can as you an imagine? employer, you don't know what to do with your microwave anymore based on that decision. But you, I, God, I, just, I don't know if people it. understand that. A multicultural office with every face from across country, uh, and this woman who uh, they went after, her house she is a successful black Canadian businesswoman and they made it a, an issue about uh, you know we don't like your food so they were picking on this woman for, for the longest time we weren't allowed to pop popcorn in this building because uh, the boss didn't like it but I don't know if anybody went running and screaming to the Human Rights Commission well, yeah. because uh, I don't know I'm from uh, Popcornistan. Well if you could get $36,000 for filing a complaint and you were there six weeks as an employee that's $6,000 a week I don't know many people that make $6,000 a week but why not if it's yeah. a free ride? So the uh, court said that this is ridiculous but to, in a greater scheme not just on how you're going Going, this is going to affect your client, who, by the way, everybody, gets to go through this whole thing again with the ridiculous people at the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. That is awesome. Uh, how does this affect the way the tribunal will work in the future when the court says, you guys are out of your mind, you don't get to work with that uh, broad of a uh, tableau? We we'll just have to wait and see. It's hard to say. I mean, the Human Legal Rights Support Center has been reported by the Toronto Star. They're going to pick up the tab for the divisional court case. Now, there's a $10,000 cost award in favor of our, our clients, and apparently our tax dollars are going to be used by the government to pay this cost award on behalf of Seema Sadie so she doesn't yeah. have to pay it herself so she can take another run at it. And this woman didn't have a problem with any of this stuff until she was fired and I think it's important to underline what you just said again that uh, your client, the woman who they went after her they went after her home because they're training new Canadians to show people how you would have the business attire that you would have to have in a, uh, in a business office and she's not wearing that attire and so how do you train somebody on how to dress when you're not even dressing that way in the first place. So that's uh, point number one. But our, our tax dollar goes towards financing the person who complains. But the person who's hauled in front of the court, they have to pay out of their own money until the court decides that this is ridiculous and they force that woman to finally pay. And then the tribunal bails her out. And wants to run another hearing. And is going to run another hearing. Yeah, and it's not it's not easy for small businesses and people what, to, what, what, to, to Ted, deal with we've it. only got a minute and a half. Yeah. What do we do? We are I mean, this is absolutely insane and I don't know if provincial or federal governments hear us crying because I think if you take this up and you say, well, wait a second, there uh, some of these decisions are crazy. Let's keep in mind that this is a black woman that the court, uh, the Human Rights Tribunal decide, decided was wrong here. And I think that's important, but only important because I think nobody touches it because they see it as a uh, political hot potato as if we don't see it as fit in protecting minorities if we say that the Human Rights Tribunal is out of control. Well, the Divisional Court, which is three judges who are very experienced in hearing these types of cases, has sent a clear message to the Human Rights Tribunal, uh, basically instructing them on how they can avoid this kind of a problem in the future, and hopefully that will solve part of it. But the rest of the problem is the free ride. It's a free ride for complainants. It and it's, really it's, is. Explain that again. I know we've gone over it a couple of times. Any employee who wants to file a complaint can file the complaint no matter how frivolous their claim is, and they'll get a lawyer for free from the Human Legal Rights Support Center. If they run the hearing and they lose, there's no cost consequences. They don't have to pay the legal fees for the employer who defends a four- or five-day hearing. So if they lose, it's, they're in the same boat that they were in at the beginning. If they win, they get their lottery.
Yeah, that that's the unbelievable thing, folks. And in those other cases, too, where somebody's smoking marijuana outside of the restaurant and um, the guy just asks them to move along. But wait a second, I got medical marijuana. You're discriminating against me. Well, I don't know what the standard is. It turns out there's not a standard. There's no previous ruling or nobody said what is correct. But we get to make new precedent on the back of somebody who's got to pay their own way and the complainant doesn't have to do any of that. Ted, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Ted Charney, renowned litigator on what I think we should all be just incensed about. 255 in the Feel Good Edition. Tonight at 7 on Friendly Fire with Ryan and Terry. Ryan, what was in the name? Well, what's in the name is a question the Toronto police are asking and we'll tell you why. Friendly Fire with Ryan and Terry. There's no...